Oh, hey, what's happening there, YouTube? It's Brian House here for Housework, and today we are going to be going over all of the modifications, changes, and upgrades we've made to the Revolution 2x72 belt grinder project. Uh, you'll see right behind me is uh, four grinders, generation one, two, three, and four. Uh, and I'd like to just first and foremost thank you guys for supporting my work right here on YouTube. About a year and a half ago, I started this project where I wanted to build a grinder. And through the comments and the emails and all of the contact that I've gotten from you, the viewer, uh, helped me sort of make, make that happen and put together a really great little kit here. Um, when I started that, I was a computer tech. Uh, I did a lot of uh, bladesmithing on the side and that kind of thing. And my ultimate dream and goal was to work uh, here on YouTube and do this full time. And because of the house made project and the revolution project, um, I'm now able to do that. So I really truly appreciate you guys for supporting my work and making this happen for me. You have changed my life and it has been uh, quite a ride. So, and we're not done yet. This is just the beginning. Uh, so behind me, uh, generations one, two, three, and four, you'll see uh, the original prototype in the middle. Uh, that was all uh, hand cut out by me using an angle grinder and a cutoff wheel. Uh, drilled the holes myself and did all that. And then we um, upgraded to generation two, which was all laser cut parts. Uh, you could still build it uh, by hand. In fact, a lot of people do still build this by hand. They don't actually get the laser cut parts that we provide or uh, they don't have access to a CNC laser, so they do it themselves. And this has been done all over the world, thousands of times over. Uh, and then generation three, which was one of my favorite, favorite versions of this. Uh, and it, but it still had the original D plate, which I wasn't fully, um, I always thought we could get a little bit more height above the work rest. And that's what we did uh, here in generation four. Plus generation three just did not have the uh, tracking mechanism that I had always wanted to add to the kit. Now we've solved that in generation four. In fact, uh, it comes with tracking, comes with a very much uh, easier to build work rest assembly and also the upgraded D plate. And a couple other minor changes to some of the platen bracket parts and all that. We'll get into that all in a, in a little bit here. But one thing I also did was I completely burned the original plan set to the ground and rebuilt it from the ground up. It just needed a complete overhaul. And the reason is, is the first set of plans that I designed, they work. Many people built this grinder using those plans uh, and still are. But uh, I learned so much using Fusion. I drew up the uh, CAD uh, version of the Revolution, which you can buy on the website if you want to play around with it. And then also uh, Fusion has some cool functionality where you can uh, you know, import drawings, you know, create drawings and then dimensions. It just made it so much simpler and created these awesome drawings so that you can follow along and build it so much quicker, easier, and more efficiently. Uh, the other thing we did was we made some um, changes to the, the way it's assembled, the fabrication component. We let the CNC laser make some cuts that would uh, help the builder actually build it faster. Anyhow, um, the, the reason I've got all these grinders set up here today so you can kind of check them out too was the other part of this is that I wanted to show you that uh, all these different attachments, they fit. Everything works with it. In fact, everything is reverse compatible. So if you built generation one, you, if you built, uh, had anything for generation four, you want to go backwards, you could do it. All right. So, uh, that was kind of the, one of the key design components to this thing. And I have yet to actually find an attachment that cannot be fitted up to use on the revolution. So I wanted to kind of demonstrate that as well. Anyhow, I'm chatting along. So uh, let's dig into the details of what we have done here with generation four. All right, generation four. Uh, there are quite a few small differences here. I'm gonna try to go over every single one of them, the advantages uh, to gen four versus gen three and previous editions. Um, I built this one about two weeks ago. I did a full video on the build. Uh, it's a complete walkthrough, which basically is just kind of a companion to the plan. So if you decide you want to buy the uh, kit and or the plans, you can follow along. It's all time stamped. I'll put a link so you can go check that out. Um, one of the cool things I'm already seeing, um, being that these were just shipped out about a week ago, is that uh, they're already being photographed and put up online. I, uh, that is a great indicator at how simple this one is to build because people are telling me, hey, it's cut my build time in half, you know, people that have built both. So 
Um, I'm really proud of that fact that we were able to uh, increase the efficiency of fabrication. Uh, you can go on to Facebook. Uh, there is a Facebook forum where you can uh, check out and ask all these questions, check out other people's builds, and they're building not just the Revolution, but their own homemade grinders there as well. We just talk about all this kind of industrial machining stuff. So anyway, let's get into the nuts and bolts of this thing and what the differences are. The first major change I would say that I, I really like about this build is the D-plate. Like I said earlier, we were able to get two more inches on the platen face. Uh, that was always kind of something I wanted to fix in the previous editions and couldn't do it. Uh, I couldn't get the design to just look right and feel right and then work with the old work rest. So that actually prompted me to rebuild the work rest. Uh, the work rest now has a notch in it, when in previous editions it did not have a notch. Uh, and this is because uh, you, you want to be able to work around the outer edges of this platen, and it's nice to have support on either side of the platen bracket and platen face. Now, the work rest is greatly simplified now. So it's uh, just the few pieces here uh, that create the tilting moving mechanism that just, it's just so much simpler to build now. There's no all thread. There's no uh, need for uh, any kind of complicated geometry. It just functions and it tilts uh, to 45, no big deal, does that very easily. And it works in the horizontal position as well. Uh, and it saddles right up to the platen face, which uh, I've seen some uh, high-end uh, manufactured grinders that they, ha they haven't figured it out yet how to slide everything up to it uh, and make it fit up, and we've done that here. Uh, the other major change is uh, something that might be uh, overlooked in a lot of designs, but the simplicity of the tracking mechanism. Uh, the tracking mechanism is essentially two pieces of cut steel and hardware. And when you get those pieces, you do have to do some fabrication. We give you the cut pieces. You got to drill and grind a couple things down. One of the design challenges that comes along with working with plate steel is, you know, you have to kind of make it simple to manufacture, but you also don't want any play in the mechanism itself. So it's really kind of difficult because you're, you're working with CNC laser and uh, you know, not every operator is the same, so all that G-code matters. And actually, I wanted to be able to allow the user to put their thumb somewhere so that when they gripped onto this, they would be able to shift and turn this thing with uh, ease. However, because of its fine-tuning nature when you're doing that, it has to be just very subtle changes. So, you know, when you loosen this bolt, you can actually just kind of twist this thing and and fit it up so that it'll track both in forward and reverse uh, that was something i spent an enormous amount of time on to try to figure out and once i got it i knew i had it and uh, hopefully this will be a lifelong tracking mechanism for this design the other piece to the fabrication puzzle is that then the cutouts for the risers now just put the risers exactly where they need to go very little measuring has to take place when you want to assemble this thing. It takes a lot of time out of the fabrication component. And you get a much more accurate build. Now, uh, in previous builds, you had to buy some all thread, use some nuts and, and shore everything up and kind of make, ensure that happens. And then take the machine apart and thread through the bolt, which could be a little bit daunting. Now, by doing this, we've eliminated that entire process. So you weld these in place, you put your hinges on, and then you thread up your bolt, weld it all together, and you're done. Now, I get a ton of questions about attachments, and uh, we don't make any attachments for this thing other than the actual platen D-plate and then the work rest that plugs into it. Uh, that all comes standard with the kit. Uh, but I, there are so many attachments out there and people making them that any attachment I have found that will fit any other 2x72 belt grinder will fit up just fine on the Revolution. In fact, it's all cross compatible even with previous generations of the Revolution and that's because we've kept the uh, chassis the same. So the same hookups for everything, receiver tubes, and the balance is all just the same. Every part of it works. It's just kind of uh, been a continual component to the design of this thing. So real quick, 
I'm just going to go ahead and show you what's available. Uh, the small wheel attachment, I like the one from TR Maker. Uh, this is a fantastic little device. Uh, I've got other videos on that. You can go out and find that online. I'll put links down in the description. The contact wheel, uh, about a ton of people make these contact wheels. Um, I have a link for a company that makes them overseas. You can get it per, for a pretty good discount. If you don't want to wait, there's Amazon, there's Ameribraid. There's all kinds of options out there, and I'll put those links down in the description. And lastly, I get asked about surface grinding attachments all the time. I have no plans to build one or make plans for one in the future, but this one I was blessed to... Um, own one from the Alex Steel Co. Uh, they're made by 84 Engineering down in Australia and I was just lucky enough to get my hands on one and uh, I love the thing and it's a fantastic purchase. And yes the work rest nests right up to a contact wheel in its standard configuration in 45 and 90 degrees. Uh, I get asked a lot about how to connect a contact wheel to a tooling arm. I'll probably make a whole separate video on it. It's not complicated, but there are a few details that need to go be gone over. So I'll just probably make another video on that and that way you guys can see how I do it. I think one of my favorite parts of doing this work is interacting with you guys through Facebook, through email, uh, through Instagram, all of those places where we can connect uh, and you all have given me your suggestions, you've helped me with the plans, you've helped me with the design, and that has uh, kind of introduced me to a whole new world of people who are doing their own engineering. So I truly appreciate you doing that. Um, there's a, a contact form on my website, housemade.us. You can go there, you can uh, take a look at all of the things that we have for sale there, and that helps support uh, everything I do here in my workshop and studio. Uh, there's buy me a coffee, there's Patreon, you can do any of those things and that would also help support what I do. If you got something out of today's video guys, make sure you hit that thumbs up button and if you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button and if you click that little bell, you'll get a notification every time I upload something to YouTube. And I always, always, always love hearing from you guys. So make sure you go to the Facebook forum and uh, the DIY Boat Grinders group and leave a comment, uh, send a photo out there and show off your builds. Even if it's not a revolution, I love to see what you guys are up to in your workshops. Thanks so much guys for hanging out in my workshop and studio. I hope to see you on the next video. My name is Brian House and this has been Housework. Uh -huh.